Hello everyone, and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0.23.5. In this episode, I hope to get Jeb safely back to Earth. Uh, this is going to take quite a bit of doing, and uh, maybe I'll get as far as the docking in this episode. I'm not too sure if I can get through re-entry, we'll see. I'd hate to leave re-entry for another episode, though. But first things first, we need to get Jeb out. I don't know if this is a different EVA report we can do here. No. Uh, it's just in space. Okay. What is that? EVA set target force close. Hmm. I don't remember those. Anyway, uh, he's probably gonna have to float down anyway. Don't break anything, Jeb. Okay. Land on his feet. Unlike in the Apollo tribute mission. Oh well. Okay. Very convincingly on the lunar, lunar surface. Okay, so uh, let's take surface sample. 160 signs for a sample from the Midlands. Darker Midlands surface appears to be made of basaltic rocks. Keeping that data. EVA report. All about the dust. Keep that. And plant a flag. Okay. So, uh, uh, Jeb in the Midlands. And hopefully that'll remind me not to do this one again. Jeez, my typing is not good. Okay, uh, what shall we say? Hmm. Lunar landing on the cheap. Okay, yes, that was our goal. And so basically uh, we did two launches to uh, make this happen, right? There's a return vehicle launch and this launch and uh, combined the mass was half of that of the Saturn V rocket and uh, we got one person on uh oh sticky keys on the lunar surface instead of two so I guess it's fair enough uh, do I want to turn on sticky keys? no so yeah, I mean it was practically exactly right. I mean we used half the half the rocketry, if you will, half the mass, and got half the number of people on the surface of the moon. So yeah, everything looks good. Okay, now uh, this stage should be full. Yes, it is. So are we ready to leave? Leave this place. Certainly, there's no way we could get to a different biome. I wanna let's see now. Make sure we did all the science. Oh, log seismic data. Oh, okay. No, we already did that, I guess. Yeah, the Vern Lander has already taken care of most of this stuff. So, yeah. Oh well. We got a little bit of science, but not as much as I would have liked. But at least we got the practice for landing on the moon. Now. We need to worry about, now if I separate, is it going to be able to keep my target? Should do, right? Because uh, it's just still the same top stage. Okay, I think we can wait a little bit before uh, heading up to it, so I'm going to time warp so that it can come around. Obviously no rotation of the moon issue to wait out. We do have a discrepancy between our orbit and the target orbit here. We are going to be going uh, 300 degrees, I think will be our heading. Okay. Always wanted a bit ahead. Uh, yeah, a little bit further ahead. There we go. Alright, that should do. Okay, yeah, it's better to catch up than to do anything else. Now, what we need to do is separate properly. Uh, one time previously I had trouble with that. Well, actually more than one time. I accidentally let the descent... Actually, you know what? 
There's there's no actual problem with launching with the descent stage here, is there? I mean, sure, it doesn't look like Apollo or anything, but we weren't trying to do Apollo. And we still got fuel in this bottom stage, so we might as well use it. So we'll launch with the descent stage and then separate and ignite the top stage. But uh, I've, you know, obviously the key is to uh, both shut down this stage and move this stage up so that uh, it's actually the ascent stage that ignites. But uh, finally figured it out eventually. All right, yeah, let's use this stage's fuel instead of the ascent stage's fuel to lift off. All right, Jeb, are you ready? Because here we go. Gear up. Not that that matters at all. This will just come oh, crashing down to the, to the surface way. again. So, uh, no worries. Oh, I did want to uh, limit the throttle on these. Let's go to 67 on both of them. Yeah? Oh. It's not doing symmetry. That's not good. Okay, got a lot of horizontal to do here. And not quite getting this done as... As precisely as I could, but... Just take care of it. There we go. Now it's just a matter of managing inclination. At, uh, at some point we'll be able to cross this one. So we should go less than. Okay. So we should go west. It shouldn't be going this way. So that way we can uh, cross that orbit and then change it a little bit. Just get it like that. And good thing we don't have to fire the RCS constantly in order to keep this thing balanced, as the lunar ascent module did. And that that caused the fuel margins to be much tighter on the lunar ascent module than it is here. Altogether, this has about the same delta V as the lunar ascent module, but without having to fire the RCS to keep its balance, um, that's a very different situation. Though we seem to get a kick every now and again to one side. I wonder what that is. Uh, perhaps it's getting a bit high. Okay, that's that's enough. Let me just plot it here. And as you can see, it's it's higher than the orbit of our target. So I don't want to get that too excessive. Alright, so we're all set. Now remember the other the target, the return vehicle, is an unmanned vehicle, so we will, we will probably have to plan to do all the maneuvers with this one. Uh, just on the off chance that the other one doesn't have the connection back to Earth, so we're going to have to assume that it won't have that connection and that this one will be making all the maneuvers, so I'm, I'm keeping an eye on our fuel on that score. Uh, I stopped it because our closest approach distance was uh, getting a little bit uh, further, so I'm not going to uh, point in that direction anymore, I'm just going to point like this. Okay, we are in orbit around the moon, and now we have to figure out how to meet up with our target. First thing to do, of course, is to uh, adjust the inclinations even further. 
And you know what? That should be done on the other side. And that's because I can combine it with uh, lowering my orbit a little bit so that we don't have to do quite as much waiting. I've come out of time warp because our altitude is getting a little bit low. I'm going to turn on lights. Ooh, of course they are only down facing and spotlights, but we should be able to see them, right? It's got electric charge. Huh. Oh no, the lights... No, the dars. I thought they were... No, I guess the lights were on the lander stage, yeah. So we don't have lights. Oh well. But the altitude is a little bit worrying. I, I think... I think this altitude, I mean uh, 19,000 meters should be clearing everything on the moon, but I'm not sure. Mm, our periapsis is going down quite a lot. Mm, I didn't want that to happen. Okay, not quite the pure inclination change I was hoping for. Maybe on this side it'll help? Yeah. How many relights do I have on these things? Not the thruster block. Oh, a hundred. But actually my hypergolic fuel is running out. Darn. Okay, I better stop it here. We're bound to need to do a few lights of those as we get closer to the target. We'll go with this. Okay, so now we've got a... Pretty tight encounter there. Going to create a maneuver here to see if we can't bring that a little bit closer. Ah, actually, I might have to do it after periapsis. Because otherwise it seems to get my periapsis too low. So let's try and do it here. Probably not as efficient, but safer. Okay, many iterations and reiterations later, I think I, I'm satisfied with 5.8 kilometers in this case. So, and again, we're working under certain constraints, making sure our orbit doesn't uh, get too low, so we're, uh, we, we'll have a fair resulting orbit after this, and so we don't have to worry about that. This stuff goes with a lot of hypergolic fluid, so... Even though we've got uh, 100 ignitions in theory, we don't have it in practice, so this is going to be a little bit touchy. Well, there's our target. 76 kilometers away now. Okay, here we go. K 
Okay, uh, it says 5.6 kilometers here, and that's good enough for me. Going to aim at the uh, target negative relative velocity, though that'll probably wander as we orbit. Got to time warp uh, the other 43 minutes till our closest approach, and I want target now. Okay. Uh, you know what? One thing I need to do is I need to tune the the rockets a little bit slower because right now it's not fine tuned enough, and that's why I had the uh, thrust limited it in the first place because it's really too much thrust for this little thing. So uh, we want 32. Just double check that that's right on both sides. Okay. Okay, somehow we are now 4.5 kilometers at closest approach distance. This is probably because of the tiny little bursts that I get for no apparent reason. But, uh, yep, so a little bit of a change of plans there, but uh, for the better. And we're going to try and hit this pretty close. Once uh, Smart ASS has us lined up with that uh, vector, we got to turn it off because I don't want it wandering with it. So there we go. SAS back on. Say a couple more minutes. That's your pop. Okay, I think uh, this is as good as time, uh, as good a time yeah, as any. Yeah, you're pretty good. Yeah. Yeah, you're pretty good. You're about okay. Probably could thrust limit those all the way down, actually. Let's see how much push uh, RCS would give me. Let's say I line up here. I don't want SAS using the RCS though. So I'm gonna line up first, let it stabilize, and then use the RCS to see how much we can do with that. Still a bit of a pitch wiggle here. Okay. Okay. Definitely not the uh, not a whole lot. I don't know if, you know, in retrospect, I don't think thrust limiting actually works on these. Then let me just uh, test that theory out. So let's say I say 8. Whoa, okay, I'm, I'm spinning because I don't have SAS on. But, yeah, let's say I set it to 8. Point in the direction of the target. Where is the thrust indication? Oh, there it is. Okay. So let's see. Yeah, I think I get basically the full thrust, even if it's limited. Uh, it's at 13 kilonewtons. There's no way that's only 8% of its full thrust. So, yeah, thrust limiting has absolutely no effect on these little rockets. Go figure. Okay. 
Oh, I think uh, SAS is doing too much. No, that that is me. Okay. Uh. Oh. Does Scribble Alarm Clock stop me when I'm within two kilometers of a target vehicle or something? Oh, now... Well, whatever happened boosted my approach distance to one kilometer, which is not pleasant. So, the weird glitch giveth and the weird glitch taketh away. Let's see if we have control of the other vehicle. Uh, yeah, yes we do. Okay. Well, that makes things marginally easier. Now, can we find our... our target? Should be planet side, yeah. There we go. There we go. Yeah, this has a reaction wheel too. That's convenient. Oh, I totally forgot. I got the ScanSat stuff here too. Well, heck. Uh, we've got electric charge? Yeah, sure. Star radar scan. I don't even know if uh, this stuff is going to... Well, I don't want to open map just yet. Let's just... Uh, Ooh, is that what it does? I really should have uh, put it in a better location then. Well, it's not too bad. It's not clipping anything. Okay, glad to see I've got food, water, and oxygen in here. Can't really see if I've got any more ScanSat stuff. Why don't we get the key thing detector on? And so that's one thing. Uh, we've got a lot of uh, supplies left over, so we can keep... Uh, ooh, scan tone. Uh, let's disable that. Um, so we can keep Jeb in orbit around the moon for a while if we want to do some scanning. Or we could do that on a different mission. I'll see... See after docking, I'll decide that. We don't have to do all the scanning in this mission after all. Okay. I think we're all set up here. Let me turn off Smart ASS since it tends to get in the way of docking. Uh, oop. Oh, I've got the one second delay. Uh oh. So I've got. There we go. Now I've got SAS on. SAS also gets in the way of docking, but not as bad as Smart ASS. Okay, back to the other vehicle. Here, Bob. All right, now I definitely need to back off of this. All right, go the top. Let me go. Okay, now I'm a little bit concerned uh, concerned about that. That little bit sticking out the uh, antenna from the return vehicle. So we're going to have to be a little bit careful about how we approach here. a little bit off. Right. 
Okay, we gotta take SAS off. And there we go, all docked up, as uh, Jeb reports. And uh, let's just transfer him over now. Okay. Update portraits. Okay, let us uh, verify because we can't uh, can't risk anything. All right, Jeb is in there. Okay, so uh, all docked up now. But we've also got key thing going, and we've got ScanSat going. Let's analyze data. Okay, well, it doesn't provide any science, but uh, let's open the map. Or not. I think there was a... Yeah, let me configure. I think there was a ScanSat stuff here, too figure visible buttons. Okay, uh, yeah. So, small map? Oh, we seem to be scanning something. Ooh. Let's see, it's giving us a little update here. Let's wait till it's cleared. I don't know if we're getting any usable data right now. Well, we do have our little flag. Yeah, there it is. Yeah, I, I don't know if uh, radar really gives us much. I don't know. You'd think altimetry legend. Oh, it's because of the height? It's all too high. Um, this isn't calibrated very well for the heights on the moon. Because uh, uh, everything is like uh, more than, more than 10,000 meters. And that's just because of the baseline from, when, uh, from where uh, the altitude is being measured. So really, uh, it is it is doing its job. It's just that the uh, altitudes on the moon are currently so high that it's not catching it right. Um, very interesting. I haven't used ScanSat uh, except in a single test. I was just testing out whether it would actually work. So this is interesting. Polar view. Yeah, so a little bit of a disappointment. The altitudes on the moon not quite working with ScanSat here. Uh, though, again, I've got an old version of uh, everything. Uh, real solar system and all of that. All of that's been updated, so maybe the new one, the altitude uh, baseline has been adjusted or ScanSat has been adjusted, I don't know. Anything can happen with these mods sometimes. So, I'm gonna say that that's probably not very useful. Let's stop that. And let's see... The other thing we're doing right now... Yeah, actually, show overlay for the first time. Yeah, we caught some keythane over here. Oh, well, while we're up here, let's um, let's can no that makes it choppier. Yeah. Okay. So, one uh, hundred x time warp is as fast as we can go if you want to get some key thing readings. Let's do those quickly, and I do want to try and get Jeb back home. So. Can't see much here. 
Do we need to transfer any stuff? Well, let's wait until we're on the bright side. So again, that's why we were in the inclined orbit, so we could do some scanning. And I guess we'll, we'll take care of some of that. We've got 27 days worth of food, water, and oxygen, and even if we're trying to be excessively safe, it'll only take about 7 days to get back home. So we could have Jeb hang out here for 20 or so days. Let's see about uh, science. Yeah, we'll have to drop out a time warp for that. And we've got a gravioli detector. But we always seem to be above Midlands. How about a crew report? I don't know how many uh, EVA reports... Oh, I don't want to overwrite the existing. That's probably a good one. Oh, did we... Oh, this is this, this, this side. Oh, we didn't bring that along with us, did we? Okay, well, we can do a crew report here. No, it's not worth anything. Um, hmm. We might have to have Jeb EVA to bring that crew report, and it's on the opposite side of the capsule. Let's wait until we're in... In more sunlight than we are right in, than we are in right now. Yep, no avoiding it. You'll be on the opposite side. Hmm. Let's plan to go this way. Okay. Take data. That's what I want. Okay, very good. And is there any point doing an EV report here? Nope. Okay. Actually, it'll be easier if we uh, have him board here. And then. Uh, uh, I don't know about, but I do actually, come to think of it. I didn't really need to EVA him like that at all, did I? I just had to transfer him in the pod uh, and using crew to transfer to and then have him pop out, grab the stuff and then uh, transfer him by crew transfer again. No, that's not right. No, I can't do this. No. Because I think he just stowed the stuff automatically in this. Right, right, right. Okay, so I can't do this. I shouldn't have had him uh, go inside. All right, uh, EVA. Yep. He just stored the stuff. All right. All right, over there. Okay, that's done. Okay, let's continue mapping. I'll see you on the other side of our, uh, our mapping being uh, complete to my satisfaction. Okay, we've only done a very thin belt here, but I think this is as much as I have the patience for, or Jeb has the patience for, because the moon doesn't really rotate in a way that allows us to cover a lot of space within a short period of time. We'd have to wait pretty much the 20 days just to get uh, 
the latitudes that we can cover. So, I've already plotted the trip back. Uh, well, not really, because we're in such an inclined orbit that I think the best thing to do will be to head out like this and then retro burn. Oh, not in 13 days. Um, uh, oh, there's, there, there's a chance. Okay, so I guess we end up somewhere around here, is it? Okay. Okay, let's add a maneuver here. And here we will do a subsequent burn to bring the periapsis down. Feels like a lot. How? It, oh no, that's not that bad. I mean, it's not as good as the ideal return burn, but uh, but it could definitely be worse. Well, no point fine-tuning that one until we've done the first one. So okay. Uh, yeah, so let's just uh, let Smart ASS point us to the node. Now, it's not calculating our total delta V properly because it's counting this stage as negative. I need to make sure that I transfer all usable stuff over to this side. Electric charge will be handy. I don't think our food supplies are really diminishing at all. Ah, uh, we've got enough. I don't need to transfer that. Okay, and the other side should be symmetrical anyway. I've retracted the antennae. I think we are safe to dump the the ascent module now. Okay, off it goes. If this was actually the moon, it would eventually spiral downward. The moon does have a very, very, very tenuous atmosphere. Uh, just enough to produce a little bit of drag on a capsule like this to bring it down to the surface. But we don't have that here, I don't think. I wouldn't even call it an atmosphere. It's just got a dust cloud around it. Okay, I'm gonna deactivate the keythane detector, otherwise we're going to be using electric charge on the way, and that's not gonna be good. Alright, I think we're configured to head for our point. Let's see. Whoa. SAS, please. Uh, off, off. Whoa. What's with the deviation? We've actually got a reaction wheel in here. What is producing a deviation? Well, that square behind it, this is a negligible mass.
Is this an unbalanced mass somehow? Oh, we can uh, throttle the engine, I think. I hope. Yeah. Uh, let's let's have its gimbling to max, so it can compensate compensate for stuff. And I'm gonna just ignite minimally here. Oh my! We've got a problem. Turn Smart ASS off and use that instead. Well, uh, we have RCS, so we could use that to uh, to balance ourselves potentially. But this is—I didn't think we were that far off. Is what is? Maybe it's just the key thing detector? I don't know, it's not a light vehicle altogether, it's five tons. But I guess even a small deviation might be enough. Okay, RCS on. Well, RCS works at least. keeping us steady here. Let's get Smart ASS trying to control it. I'm not touching the stick right now. Ah, uh, this doesn't throttle. Yeah, it doesn't throttle. Well, we're steady now. We are firing uh, RCS a bit. This one, that one. Looks like a minimal firing of RCS though, so that's that's okay. We do have a reaction wheel in there, but I guess it wasn't enough. I don't know why I'm trying to throttle this, it doesn't throttle. But anyway, uh, we are in an escape trajectory here. I can take RCS off. And let's adjust the subsequent burn here. We are now in Earth orbit. And looking at a maneuver node in an hour and thirty. Thirty-two minutes and food, water, oxygen look good. Electric chart looks great. No worries on that stuff. It's just re-entry now. Maybe the parachutes, but mainly re-entry. There's not much difference doing it here or closer to the maneuver node. Uh, except that we don't seem to be actually aiming for a maneuver node. Come on, smart ASS, I've given you the RCS to work with. Oh, I guess I could just uh, manually break. We've got the Delta V here. I mean, I could uh, manually slow down. We'll see about that. No point having all this Delta V without using it. That might make it a little bit safer. Uh huh. Okay. Oh no, you don't. Off, 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 off. 
Uh, just point retrograde, I think. And so, I'll just use RCS to fix this. I think we got to hit 70. That's usually a safer place to be. And then I'll retro burn once we get close to it before we have to separate the service module. Okay, so that's our plan. We can now proceed. But I guess I should plot it instead of just uh, planning it. Oh, we're going to be in the dark, darn it. Okay, I think that's uh, that's fairly good. And it'll give us some margin to correct things if something goes wrong. Four days. Yep, let's go. And of course with this uh, node here, uh, Kerbal Alarm Clock will stop me if I fail to stop myself. Okay, electric charge is still fine in the pod, so I think we've got all our resources settled. Okay, I'll take that. Twelve hours orbital period. So if we do end up going around, we've got one day's worth of food, water, and oxygen in the pod. So if we do end up going around, uh, it'll be fine. That's not a problem. I will want. It, I want to hit it at seventy. Hopefully that'll be all right. <laughs> Okay. So, that's all planned for. We don't have any RCS ports on this pod itself, so that is a problem. All right, let's go. Any way you look at it, we're descending pretty fast, and and of course this pod isn't quite like the three person pod. I don't know how much of a blade of shielding it really needs to return from the moon. Well, I, we've done this before. I really should have watched that video. Uh, I don't really watch my videos after the fact to take notes on these sorts of things. I really should have watched a video where I previously brought a pod like this back from the moon. Uh, that from uh, Flyby. slowing down now. Mainly I'm worried about g-forces rather than heat, but just in case we'll keep an eye on how heat is doing as well. We're in the dark anyway so it's not going to be particularly scenic except for the fire effects. Uh, if I recall Jeb doesn't have any... well let me check actually. Does he have a window of any kind? Uh, well he's got that one but not much way to look out at stuff. There's every chance we're going to have to go around again. Ah, music's cut out. We are now in the Kerbal atmospheric altitude. Going up again now. 
a blade of shielding still not effective at all. If we have to correct our periapsis, that's not going to work out very well. We don't have any fuel, we don't have any engines, not even RCS. Okay, so we're skipping out and we're going to have to go around and come back in again. Periapsis is getting lower because of aerodynamic effects. Hopefully that won't cause any complication. It doesn't... I don't think so. I think 68 would still be safe. Okay, here we are going around, back into full on-rails time warp. South America there. So I suppose we're sort of over the Pacific on the other side. Food, water, and oxygen still holding out. Could probably do a few more orbits of uh, of the planet, but we don't want to keep him waiting too long. I really don't want to go around again, so hopefully... Wish I was able to calculate these things, I saw ya. I'm sure the relevant equations are hiding around somewhere, but... uh yeah, have to put them together sometime. By the way, while it's trivial to bring Kerbals back from the moon in regular Kerbal Space Program, so far I have never felt it to be trivial to bring them back from the real moon and real solar system with stellar re-entry and all of this. Uh, I have not gotten to the point where I have done this enough that it is, that it is anything but a nerve-wracking experience. Okay, periapsis declining, apoapsis declining. I think we are going to head in this time and we will will be making a landing. Blade of shielding still not affected yet. Of course, once that gets affected, it'll be affected pretty darn quickly. Blade of shielding now, now peeling off. Three G's. Oh shoot. Okay, I hope that wasn't important. Past 4 G's, approaching 5 G's.
5G is approaching 6. Past 6 G's. Past 7 G's, but I think we're going to peak out here. Layer shielding was more than enough. We could have packed much less than this. Raw biome mountains, but that means nothing because I don't have custom biome properly configured in this, I don't think. So we should be alright. In fact, we are over water. Okay, let me quickly check F3. Oh, uh, contact antenna. Oh, that's fine. Uh, 7.2 Gs, by the way. On the re-entry. Now getting ready for parachute deployments at about 8,000 meters, I think will be fine. SAS can be off. Okay, I think it's uh, safe for parachute deployment now. Right, parachutes deployed. Can't really see them very well. Uh oh. That looks very glitchy. Uh. Uh. Uh oh. Okay, well, parachutes are open. Okay. But that does not look right. <laughs> uh, oh boy. This may be okay, this might not be okay. Let me go to the map view. Here. I'm gonna quick save. Because. Up, uh, quick save. Uh, because this looks like something that could accidentally kill my Kerbal at the last moment and because this this is a glitch <laughs> this is a glitch uh, so I want to make sure that uh, if it's this kind of glitch I'm gonna I'm gonna reload it and uh, try and uh, back out to the tracking center or even restart the program before touching the surface could be all right, could be a problem. We'll see. Not normally prone to quick saving, but this is this is a pretty dead giveaway that I should do it. It's one of those times. And I'm not gonna time warp. I'm just gonna let it drift down and see what happens, cause I'm not taking any chances here. Okay, here we go. Okay. Okay, it looks good, even though we've got this glitch here. Uh, let's just recover him before the... As I was about to say, before the program decides to change its mind. Okay, so, return vehicle returned. Uh, we got 160 from the surface sample, 32 from the EVA report, 20 from the crew report, and uh, 2.7 from the recovery of the vessel returned. And uh, yeah, there we have it. A successful return of Jeb Kerman from the moon. And uh, yeah, I think I'll just wrap it up here. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this whole mission. And next time, I think we, we should uh, start aiming for unmanned probes to Jupiter. I think that'll have to be a thing that we do next. 
uh, we'll look into how long it takes. Uh, I know uh, some people also want me to work on my station and uh, maybe I should think about that as well. But uh, for now, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, please do press like. If you have any comments, suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you next time.